Ebullient greetings. I'm your host, Jackie Bird of Jackie Bird Spiritual Wellness, your guide to stress and anxiety relief, mindfulness, awareness, self-care, self-love, and personal growth. Welcome and thank you for joining me as we roll with peace in mind. I would like to remind you that this Sunday, February 27th, is my end of the month chill out. Stress Busters Guided Meditation. It's only 30 minutes. It's at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's virtual. Also, meditation, it's not what you think. March 12th, 13th, four time slots to choose from. I hope that you guys join me. Come on through, come on through. Today's riff is the yen for zen in our daily lives. How many times in a day is this our mindset? Get it done. Just get it done. Get this done so I can move on to the next thing and get that done and the next thing and the next thing and check, 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 check everything off my list. How many times in a day do you say that? You think that? You know, I was cutting up garlic and extremely focused on just that. Getting it done. I had other things to do. I had other things to do. And so I'm gritting my teeth in reminder of how much I just love chopping up stuff and oh my gosh how time consuming it is but then it began to dawn on me to see if i could cut the garlic and implement breathing deeply at the same time now yeah you're right i definitely couldn't smell anything but garlic but that decision reconfirmed that when the yen for zen can be satiated with some mindfulness within the execution of the tasks at hand, you're good to go. I ended up cutting that garlic like I didn't have a care in the world or a destination to get to. And before I knew it, I was finished with that task and I was off to the next. But I took a moment to acknowledge and savor that accomplishment and how it felt so stressless. The yen for Zen is often satisfied with something outside of ourselves. Events like falling in love, receiving a desired effect from a goal realized, making the amount of zeros we want, or getting that dream house, job, or child. And you know, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's all good. But when those things occur, we feel on top of the world. And you know, we should. But in time, that euphoria dissolves and the hunger for the next conquest and or achievement begins. Realize that Zen is obtainable at the tip of your nose and between your ears. You don't have to have all those things I described to be able to tap Zen. Zen is a Japanese school of Mahayana Buddhism emphasizing the value of meditation and intuition. But for our purposes, the word Zen means peaceful and calm. Dealing with things in a calm manner, not rushing, not being anxious or worried or fretting. In other words, chilled. And you know, the thing is you can rush and you can be chilled at the same time. <laughs> I did not know that those two, that seems like an oxymoron. How can I rush and be chilled at the same time? But you can. When I think of the word Zen, I get this image of someone just gliding through everything, nothing phasing them in the least, and coming up with solutions at the flick of the wrist. Matter of fact, I got a partner like that. There is very little that phases this dude. And he just kind of glides through things, you know, and I'm like, well, you need to do this and you need to do this and you need to do this. And, blah, 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 blah. and he's like looking at me. Mm hmm. And then he does what he's going to do. He just glides through and he still gets to the destination and the desired results that he's looking for without all of the stuff that I'm like going, you must do, you must do. He, bah, he's just, he's just chill. So, and I have watched this guy be having to be somewhere and, and you know, like, okay, I'm running late, but he's still just gliding through. <laughs> 
Oh man. And he's 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 a calm dude, you know? But is that a fairy tale in the real world? Is the idea of Zen something that's out of reach for the daily warrior? Especially daily warriors in the time of COVID and all the other madness that's going on in this world. The current circumstances may make it seem basically impossible to reach that space of calm, but each of us needs to be able to access it now more than ever. The good news is it can be done. Seriously, truly, I kid you not, reaching Zen is as close as the tip of your nose and the space between your ears. But it takes intention, commitment, practice, and a renewal of those things when you fall off the wagon, because you're going to fall off the wagon, because you can't stay in the Zen zone all the time. It's, nah, you can't do it. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if you say so. But how do I reach it? You may be asking. And it's something you hear me say all the time. The easiest and most accessible way to get going is to start with breathing. And I know you're like, breathing? How many times do I have to hear about breathing, 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 breathing? I breathe all the time. Otherwise, I'd be dead and I ain't no closer to no zen zone. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. That is definitely one way to look at it. But if you want to be able to access the Zen zone at will, you want to consider putting more conscious deep breathing into your day. And what I mean when I say conscious is that you make and take time to do this. When you stop to take a deep breath and let it out slowly, it's like putting a mental vacuum cleaner into use. It clears things up and gives you a bit of space to focus hear your intuition, and to take better action. It helps you be more proficient and efficient with what you have to do and or say. And you don't have to take a long time to do this. And if you need examples, go to my YouTube channel. I have these little running videos called, um, um, it could be like 54 second timeout or 20 second time out or whatever, have these little short videos that give you an insight into what it takes, what you can do to get your breathing happening. And I have gone more in depth on some breathing techniques if you really, really, really want to get down. Look at previous episodes, look at my blog, and you will be able to le link into or tap into those deep breathing techniques. Oh yeah, duh, also on my YouTube channel. I have a video with breathing techniques that you can do. Now, becoming more aware of what you think is another necessary ingredient to jump into that Zen zone. When you keep an ear out for the type of thought you think, you begin to gain control. You cannot be in the Zen zone with runaway thoughts. And the good news is that the more you become aware of the items in your mental store that do not serve you and the more you toss them out, the more of the Zen zone you will visit. And this allows you to be the master of the ship as opposed to being a passenger hurled every which way the wind blows. When you can redirect or pivot thinking patterns that go off into another direction than the one you want, your vibe changes in a big way. And it is so empowering. Now doing things that you love helps satisfy the Zen Yen. Ask yourself, are you regularly engaged in doing things that you love? more of your time in the day than not. And if not, and the absence of abundance is the hang up, what things would you be doing if money were not an issue? Think about that. What aspects or essence of those things can you start to incorporate right now? All right, so let's say 
if you had the money right now, you take a vacation and you take a vacation for six months. All right, but you can't do that right now. What does a vacation represent that would put you in the Zen zone? Okay, so it could be freedom. It could be ease. It could be peace. So what could you do right now with the circumstances that you have presently in your life that will give you freedom, that will gain peace and ease? What would those things be? Now, on to the next thing. Maybe you hate your job or career and have dreams of doing something else. What steps can you take right now toward your desires? All right, so let's say you would love to start your own business, but you've talked yourself out of it for various reasons. All right, what does having your own business represent in your mind to be part of a Zen zone? Be on boss, you wouldn't have anybody telling you what to do. You would be using your own voice. All right, those could be some things that having your own business would give you. What steps can you take right now toward your desires? Maybe it's just a matter of starting to research people that have started their own businesses and they were still grinding a job. What did they do? What steps did they take? What mindset did they have to change? You know, when you start doing that type of research and you're looking at videos and, and reading articles and inspiring stories, gives you some ideas what you can implement in your life to get you closer to where you want to go. Is there a hobby you used to do as a child or wanted to do that would bring you more joy right now? I have a friend who took up crochet and she said it helps to calm and soothe her like crazy. That helps her get into the Zen zone. And as someone who crochets, I do know how calming and soothing that is. So what did you used to do that you used to love? Did you paint airplanes? Did you put together train sets? Anything that you love to do that was a hobby you did as a child that you're like, oh man, you know, I used to do that and I could spend hours doing it and I had so much fun. Maybe revisit those things. What habit do you have that annoys the crap out of you? What steps will you take to change it? So let's say you bite your nails and you really, really, really would like to stop biting them. And I don't mean like you just say, oh man, I really like to stop biting my nails. No, I mean, you really, really, really would like to stop biting them. So what's at the heart of that? Why do you bite your nails? Oh, I don't know. I just bite them. Mm, well, that's not going to get you anywhere. What happens when you bite your nails? Maybe you heard some bad news. Maybe it reminds you of something that is ominous to you. Maybe you are so anxious in that moment and you just need a fix. You have to identify the why. The why. <laughs> and I always go to the matrix. Why? Cause and effect. But seriously, it takes some internal investigation. So... If you can figure out, oh, yeah, 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 I see. I bite my nails when I hear that person's voice, or whatever it is. If you can begin to identify that, what's your pivot? What can you do? It's always about you. You know, it could be changing your mindset about something, which is usually the case. When you master your mindset in the sense of being able to let go of certain habits, that you might really want to let go of, it helps to reduce your stress because then it doesn't become a knee-jerk reaction. And when you reduce your stress, or more importantly, how you respond to stressors, you may end up being more in that Zen Zone vibe. And the last thing is, but not last, but last for now, are the people in your life that drain you. What can you do to mitigate this? What are the things that you can change in your behavior and or approach in dealing with them? And you know, I know sometimes we all can get in that. They need to change. They need to change. But you know what? The only person that needs to change is ourselves in terms of how we respond and react. And you know, I'll give you a case in point. And I've used this example before. 
I had a contentious relationship with my landlord. I mean contentious. Couldn't stand him, stand him, stand him, stand him. And just the thought of him, even if I didn't see him for weeks, months at a time, just thinking about something he had done that was ridiculous, I would just get mad. And it would change my energy. I would be, I'd be mad. And over time, I began, like we, and we would battle. I mean, once a couple of times we were out in the hallway screaming and yelling at each other. It was really ridiculous for me because I ended up feeling awful after that. Not because I yelled and screamed at him, but because I yelled and screamed, period. Because <laughs> that meant I was out of control. So over time, I said, all right, okay, let me look at this. Is he the problem or is there something else that's the problem? And I really began to examine it and I started to get some answers. And so I also decided I'm going to change my approach. I'm going to change how I deal with him. I'm going to change how I speak to him, how I deal with him, period. And slowly but surely, because we really didn't speak to each other. We did not say hello. We did not share any pleasantries. We didn't have any of that. So I started to just say hello instead of wanting to throw up when he was at my door. <laughs> and he wouldn't speak. He'd come, come in, you know, with the attitude. But I kept doing it. I, I didn't allow that to deter me from what my intention was. And over time of me constantly saying hello, even asking how he was doing, it started to be this gruff hello. It's like you don't change people and sometimes you don't even change how they behave toward you. But your shift in how you view and behave toward people still changes the dynamic. Over time, he became more civil. Over time, we actually began to have conversations. Because we weren't having no conversations. Trust me when I tell you. He was still who he was. He was still, you know, doing the things he was doing. But he was beginning to to show me another side. I was beginning to see another side of this person. And it didn't last all the time. Trust me, I don't want you to think this was a fairy tale. There were times when we would still lock horns, but they were fewer and far in between. And he began to treat me differently. And I ain't saying that this is what happens with everybody. But I am saying, because I decided to shift my energy, it changed the dynamic of our relationship. Because it takes one person to decide, I'm not going to do the same old things that I do or did for the same results. So again, I ask you, are there people in your life that drain you? What can you do to mitigate this? What are the things you can change in your behavior and or approach in dealing with them? Particularly if, you know, you can't like move <laughs> or quit your job if it's a coworker. If you can't make changes like that and you have to be around them, shift your perspective. Shift your behavior. If your absolute desire and intention is to experience more joy, more peace, and satisfaction in your life, and they're all Zen Zone components, you will make and take steps to realize this more fully. And the other thing to help you touch that Zen Zone thing is, can you think of moments of Zen that you've had in the past and or witnessed. Now, recalling a memory from the data banks of my five-year-old self, I realized that the first example of Zen was my mother. 
We were heading back to the train, you know, we were leaving Jacksonville, Florida, and it was a perfectly sunny day, it was gorgeous. And as usual, I'm in the back seat, and that was in the days before car seats, y'all, and uh, seat belts and all that stuff. So I was in the back seat. Normally, I would stand up in the back seat to see. But in this instance, I know some of y'all are just cringing. In, the, <laughs> in that instance, I was sitting behind the driver. And she was a family friend or a member. I don't remember. But, you know, she was driving. And I was sitting behind the driver's seat when out of nowhere, a bolt of lightning shot down the side of the car on my mom's partially opened window. So it like shot down the side of the car and it was like right basically on the window. And it, it was like, shoot, I could still hear the sound. And it was like the Frankenstein movies where you hear that. And I know those of you that live in Florida and places where those electrical storms are off the chain, I know y'all know what that sounds like. You know, so, hey, I'm five. And I screamed and started crying. Shoot, I would have done that now. But I screamed and started crying. But quickly and ever so calmly, mommy rolled up the window. Oh, yeah, that was also way before <laughs> automatic windows. She rolled up the window very calmly. And, you know, when you had to roll up windows, it took some elbow grease to get that thing to go up. It took some time, but she rolled up the window quickly. And I remember as young as I was, I was shocked at how calm she was. Cause you know, I, from my vantage point, she was gonna she was gonna be toast. And I knew at five years old that you get hit with light, lightning, that's it, you done. So I, my terror was just, you know, eh, I, I can see myself screaming. But because she was calm, and you know what? Once she got that window up, girlfriend went on chatting as if nothing had happened. There was nothing in her demeanor or energy that led me to believe she was at all shaken by what had occurred. But her being calm helped me calm down. So can you think of moments of Zen that you had or witnessed? So you want to build up your arsenal. What's your Zen zone arsenal? What, what kind of things can help you get there that you already know, that you already have, that's already in your history? Being able to access the Zen zone is so important for our mental health, our health and well-being. Something to cultivate in our daily lives and not be dependent upon whether or not you're on a vacation. Because... You could go on a vacation, let's say you do two weeks, but that's 14 days out of 365. So what are you going to do with the rest of that time? And you can't get or stay in the Zen zone all the time, as I said earlier. It's just not possible. I mean, life is happening all around us as we breathe, but we can tap into it when desired and needed. It takes showing up, practice, perspective, and relaxation. Relaxation, because you can't be in the Zen zone all tensed up, PO'd, worried, frustrated, depressed, or any other kind of LLFs, low-level frequencies. If you begin getting your Zen zone mojo together while not at the boiling point of stress outness, the better prepared you'll be to call on it at will. Because, man, when you, you know, when you stress, you all the way up, that temperature's all the way up, and you don't have the tools because you haven't been practicing, that's not the time that you're going to think about, oh, I need to take a deep breath before I say something that I will regret. I do something that I will regret. When you practice, you get a moment in that pause between what's occurred and your response. And I mean, we're talking about split, you know, time. We're not talking about, oh yeah, it's gonna take me five minutes to think before I react. No, no. When you get in the habit of touching the Zen zone, of remembering I need to take a deep breath before I speak, 
I need to take a deep breath before I yoke this person. I need to take a deep breath before I send that email or that text that's going to escalate the situation between myself and another person. You have the wherewithal to take that breath, take that pause, and in that pause, you step into the Zen zone. You begin to calm yourself down. And then you step forward with much more awareness. So that's why you have to practice. How do you get your Zen Zone mojo going? With a mindfulness and awareness practice. You get onto the trail of becoming more in tune with you so that you can be the peace you wish to see. And for more ideas, tips, and how-tos on getting your Zen Zone mojo happening and to reduce your stress, anxiety, anger, depression, as well as increasing your mindfulness and awareness, there are an array of products, music, and services, as well as events to check out on my site, Jackie Bird Spiritual Wellness. Dot com and that's Jackie J A C Q U I E B I R D. Thank you for listening. Won't you share this podcast with a friend, family members, and or colleagues? Remember to roll with peace in mind.